Good morning, I'm Lauren Nashoni, and this is our morning reflection. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way, stand firm in the Lord, beloved. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is, let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. The gospel today is from Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, a rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, what is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship. You can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, what shall I do now that my master is, 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 is taking the position of steward away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, how much do you owe my master? He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here is your promissory note. Sit down quickly, write one for 50. Then to another he said, and you, how much do you owe? He replied, 100 measures of wheat. He said to him, here is your promissory note. Write one for 80. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently, for the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than the children of light. Isn't this a challenging gospel? Reminds us that sometimes Jesus was always on the side of the disempowered, of those who had very few choices to make. The steward did what he felt he had to do to survive. He made prudent choices, which the master then commended. So we are reminded, especially today, um, that sometimes in life, the journey is not easy. Sometimes in life, we have to make very, very difficult choices. Sometimes those choices really don't have a perfect ending or an end in that they challenge us to to take a look at two directions, neither of which may be very good to go in, but one of those has to be embraced, maybe not wholeheartedly, but nonetheless, it's kind of what we are going to have to do. Jesus at the end says, the master commended the dishonest steward for acting prudently. He did what he had to do to save himself. Maybe if he had shown that kind of resourcefulness early on, the master might not have let him go. And then Jesus says, the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation. The people know what they need to do sometimes to stay out of trouble. And, and um, uh, we, we see that in our, in our own time, in our own world. Very often, someone who is 
uh, in a, a, a very difficult legal situation will be counseled by uh, attorneys to plead guilty and to uh, receive um, uh, a probationary sentence rather than go to jail. And the person may know in their heart of hearts and the attorney for that person may know they're completely innocent, but they make the prudent choice. It's not a choice they will like, but probation is certainly going to be better than sitting in jail. So again, there are those moments in life when we have to um, make a choice for perhaps our own survival or perhaps the well-being of ourselves and our families might not be a choice that we really want to make, but um, it's the prudent one at that particular time. Uh, choices for Jesus Christ in, in the first few centuries after he was crucified were difficult for many, many people uh, in terms of persecution. There were a whole lot of people who could not have endured that persecution and who renounced their faith only to come back to it later. We, used to, we tend to think that you know all, all the early Christians who chose that were willing to be martyrs, and, and that simply was not the case. Our journey with Christ has its ups and its downs. Sometimes we get mad at, at, at God because we've suffered a loss that's inexplicable or because it's not fair or whatever the case may be, and maybe we might walk away from God. And it's very possible that we need that time to sort it out. Maybe coming back from that experience, we will come back stronger in our faith in God because of the experience of being without God. Maybe that will trigger in us a different kind of approach or emotion, making us realize that the power of anger and fear are to be overcome. And the last place to express it is toward God, but sometimes we have to live through the experience to understand it. How many times parents with kids sit down when they've done something wrong or when they've acted imprudently will say, where are you now in your thoughts with that? How did you process that? You came through it. How did it change you? What would you do if you entered that situation again? So, you know, life is not all, as I like, it's not all sunshine and lollipops. Very often, life, life is tough, and tough decisions have to be made, and none of those decisions are the perfect one, but hopefully we choose the one that gets us to where we need to be with dignity and grace. You know, I always say that to people when, they, when they've had a tough situation and they come to me and say, what am I going to do? You know, I have to act in such and such a fashion which I never thought I would have to, but this is the only way that I can resolve it. I always tell them, dignity and grace. Do the best you can in life, in tough situations, acting with dignity and grace. It'll get you far. People will forgive a lot, and you might be able to restore yourself after going through that difficult time. You not only might be able to, but you will, because faith in Christ and Christ in us is the ultimate healer. It's the ultimate way back, and it's the ultimate way home. I've had people come to confession to me, and I can always tell when it's been a long time, because I can hear the tears and the sobbing on the other side of the screen and they will let me know about something that went wrong decades ago, but they never turned to confession to unburden themselves. They may never even have acknowledged it privately and personally in their conversation with God, but now, later in life, they, they just need to get rid of it. They did it. Perhaps they're not proud that they did it. They never did it again, but it lingers there as a blemish on the heart and the soul, and they simply want that resolved. And you know what happens at the end, my friends? They're still crying on the other side of the screen because the hardest thing is to forgive one's self. And that's part of what Jesus was talking about in the gospel, that we have to live with ourselves with some of those choices that may not be perfect, but that forgiveness is always there from God to us because we are all the Lord's children. Take care, my friends. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. And now, my friends, as we have shared the Word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion.
My friends, we now invite you to spend some time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. We usually uh, follow up my reflections and my, um, my gospel reflections with this time. And uh, so often I will say to you, uh, pray and reflect on a psalm or on some of the words of the gospel, something Jesus says, or a parable. This is a great time to do that. And so join me now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. And my friends, as you spend time before the Lord, may he bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy these moments of private prayer and reflection. <laughs>